Hello, this is Kylie from Hello Crafter. I'm sharing this video with you to show you how I made these cute mini crackers. So each of these crackers are made using one sheet of six inch by six inch design series paper. And they've got this lovely pentagonal shape, so they're really cute. And they are the perfect size for fitting in a small gift or a few chocolates or sweets. So the reason why I'm sharing the video is that I've sent out quite a few of these cracker making kits through the post this month. So if you have received one of these kits, then this video should tell you everything you need to know about how to assemble your crackers. Uh, but if you haven't received one of these kits, then hopefully you'll be able to follow along using supplies that you already have at home. And I love making these crackers and actually I've put together a tutorial to show you how to make a full size cracker and a cracker that will fit in a chocolate orange. And these make fantastic gifts. So the tutorial will be available for free and I'm going to let you know how to get hold of that tutorial at the end of this video. So do stay tuned. So one of the sets of papers is this poinsettia place designer series papers really lovely rustic feel more traditional vibe with lots of poinsettia florals pine cones berries and holly on one side and on the other side some more rustic feel with the wood grains and the leaves and some lovely patterned papers on the back and if you like snowflakes you'll love these papers these are the Snowflake Splendour designer series papers with the hand painted snowflakes for an instant watercolour feel and full of wintry blues and some purples there. And then lastly we have the Heartwarming Hugs designer series papers with the lovely reds and greens and more traditional feel but with really nice simple modern designs. So that's one side and you've got slightly more subtle patterns on the reverse. So if I've sent out one of my cracker making kits to you in the post, this is what your kit will contain. You've got six sheets of the designer series papers, which have been cut down to six inches by six inches square. And these will come in either this design, the snowflakes, or the poinsettia or the heartwarming hugs papers, which I showed you a moment ago. You've also got a whole reel of ribbon that coordinates with the papers. This is the pool party sheer ribbon. And you've also got some die cut labels that you can use to add a personalized label to each cracker. And these white ones are die cut using the Stitch Shapes die set and these ones from the Layering Ovals die set. And you are free to personalize these with rubber stamps, a stamped greeting, or you can hand write something on on there it's totally up to you you've also got a template which i've created for you you just need to take your scissors and cut away these triangles as i mentioned before the sheets in your kit have been ready scored for you i've done that work for you just to save you some time but i will take this opportunity in this video to show you how i did that so you can recreate the projects if you want to make more so in addition to your kits you will need to gather the following supplies um, scissors definitely and some glue this is the Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue, which is the glue that I tend to use for all of my crafting. It's brilliant. It's, it's a wet glue like PVA, but unlike PVA, it's really super strong. So you need hardly any of it, so you don't end up wetting your card or paper too much. I'm using a bone folder. This is a really useful paper crafting tool. Um, when you are folding paper or card, this helps to give a really nice crisp fold, but it is optional. You can use your fingernail to get your, your creases really crisp, but this is something that I use every day. I've also got a pencil and ruler here. You shouldn't need to use this, um, but we are working with some papers that are quite heavily patterned. So this might come in handy if you can't see your crease lines very well. And lastly, I have some sentiment stamps and some ink so that I can create my personalised labels for my crackers. So the quickest and easiest way to score your sheets is using a scoreboard, something like this. And this makes it really simple to do. And if you're mass producing projects like this, if you're doing quite a few of them, then anything to make your life easier is always a good thing. And just as easy actually is using the trimmer, which also has a scoring blade on this one. So quite a few trimmers on the market have um, scoring option as well. So you can do that on here as well. And that's also very quick. I'm gonna show you both ways uh, actually. So depending on what equipment you have at home, 
Um, you can also do it without either of these, with just a ruler and pencil. And you would just need to measure and mark all your lines and then fold on those lines. Uh, but just for speed, we're going to use the trimmer first here. And I've got my scoring tool here and the measurements along the top. And I'm simply going to find the measurement and use my tool in the grooves of the scoreboard to score a line. So the first set of measurements I need, so with my paper right up into the corner, as far as it will go, and using this hand to keep it pushed into the corner, I'm going to score at one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches, and five inches. And then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and push it back into the corner. And this time I'm going to score at one inch, one and a half, two, and then at four, four and a half, and five. So the first score lines we did at one inch intervals, they are the lengthways score lines of your cracker. And then these six score lines here form the ends of your cracker. I'll show you again on the trimmer this time. So I have popped my card into line up with the one inch mark and with my cutting blade moved right out of the way gently score at one inch move it along to two inches three inches four inches and five inches Turn it 90 degrees and I'm going again at one inch, one and a half, and two, and four, four and a half, and five. So I have my two pieces scored now. And I'll just show you a, a template that I made that shows you those score lines more clearly because it is quite hard to see even on this lightly patterned paper some of your patterns will be a lot heavier so it will be really difficult to see the score lines on some of your patterns um, so this is what it actually looks like you've got your five score lines going lengthways down your cracker and then you've got these six score lines three on each side to form the ends of your cracker. They're the bits that will be folded inwards to create the cracker shape. The next step is to fold on your score lines. So I'm gonna take this one because you can just about see the lines on this one. So if you decide which pattern you want your cracker to be, so what will be the outside and what will be the inside that you can't see. So I quite like this big pattern to go on the outside. So I'll just find my score lines and very carefully fold over and that's where my bone folder comes in useful to get a nice sharp crisp fold just carefully finding the score lines and folding back on those those vertical lengthway score lines will form like a pentagon shape tube. So unfold that and then fold these other ones. So there's a trick to folding these ones back. So if you lay your paper with the inside design upwards, so this is the 
pattern that you don't want to be showing on the outside. And then find the, the three score lines that go across here and find the one that's nearest the middle of the, of the paper and fold that inwards. And then find the next score line next to that one, the middle of the three, and fold it out again. And then you've got that final score line that you fold inwards again. You've created like an M shape. There. And you can do the same on the other side. So again, start with your inside design facing upwards. Find the first score line that's the nearest to the centre of the paper and fold inwards. Find the next score line and fold outwards. And the next score line fold inwards again. So on both sides you have this sort of shape. So you have mountain fold, a valley fold, and a mountain fold. That's how you refer to those. The mountain ones point to the sky and the valley ones point downwards. So that's what you're looking for. I'll do the same on this one. So once you have all those sorted, then we need to do some cutting and that's where your template will come in. So if you take your template and your scissors and just snip away those triangles, so you've got two half triangles on the ends and then five triangles just to cut away. And not forgetting about the half triangles. So how we line this up with our paper so we can create our cutting lines. So you have your little valley folds here. Uh, so if you fold on that line and just get the whole thing folded over. And so you're revealing some of what will be the inside of your cracker there. So what you need to be able to see are the score lines. You've got the five lengthways score lines that run the full length of your cracker. Five of those and then you've got a score line running widthways. And the points where those score lines meet is where you will need to cut to. So I am going to mark on here and you may want to do this with a pen or pencil those points. I'm just making a mark where those score lines meet. And that is really to show you where you will lay your template. So you are creating triangles from those points down to the fold line. So I'm just laying my template over the top so that the points of of the triangles are aligned with the score lines. And once I've done that, I can draw on my triangles. I'm doing this in pen so that you can see more easily on the video. I'll do that on the other side as well. So taking the middle of those three score lines and folding it back, laying this over the top 
so that the tips of the triangles are aligned with the score line crossovers. And then I can snip away. So I'm snipping through both sides of the paper at the same time. And what that's going to do is create little diamond shapes. So the important thing is not to let the bottoms of your triangles touch. You need about half a centimetre in between the triangles because otherwise your cracker will just fall apart if they're too close together. So you'll probably find once you've done a few of these you probably won't even need the template at all. You'll be able to snip these triangles just by eye. And they don't have to be perfect. They're a little bit wonky, that is totally fine. So I'll move those out of the way. And when you open it up, this is what you're left with. So you can see on both sides, you've got diamond shapes running all along that are perfectly within those score lines there. All that needs to be done is to assemble the cracker and all we're doing is overlapping one side with the other. We're overlapping the whole panel. So they should match up pretty well. Now the difficult thing is, because it's a pentagon shape, you can't push it flat to glue it down. So there will be a little bit of holding it in the air and just moving it around until the glue sets. So this is why I love to use this wet glue because it gives you a little bit of time to adjust the position before the glue dries. So I'm putting glue, not too much, just all over the outside design, all over one panel. And then I'm taking the other side round, folding it round and laying it over the top, just using my fingers to move it into place and get it all lined up as best I can. And then after a few seconds, that will dry. And then because of the way you've already folded the score lines, they should perfectly pop into place. So I'm using some of this beautiful sheer ribbon for this cracker. It's about a centimetre, so it's a perfect width for this kind of project. And it ties beautifully. So if you're tying it just in a knot, you'll only need about 30 centimetres uh, for each side of the cracker. I'll just show you what that looks like. So it's like a double knot. Um, but you can then just angle the edges. Uh, and it just looks like that, pretty nice. So not everybody likes to do bows. If a lot of people find them very fiddly, but if you were to want to do a bow, then you'll probably need about 50 centimeters per side. So let's try that. So I'll just do it in a single knot and then a loop round, push through, and loop and tighten a bow and then you can just adjust the size of the bow there and then I'll just cut off some excess then you can have a bow instead uh, but the knot actually looks pretty nice too so as a finishing touch I'm going to create a little label for my cracker and I'm going to stamp a sentiment onto mine and I'm using the Itty Bitty Christmas stamp set, which has got a range of Christmas greetings. And 
these are perfect for your Christmas cards and handmade gift tags and for little gifts like this. So it's a really useful one. This is the pool party ink, which coordinates with the ribbon and the uh, little label there. And I've taken the Very Merry stamp out of this one and I've mounted it uh, already onto a block there because it's quite a tiny stamp. And over my ink pad, can gently tap a few times, just very gently into the ink and stamp that straight down onto my label. And then I've got my Very Merry, a little bit wonky, but that's okay. And I'm just going to get my glue back and glue that straight down in the center of that scalloped oval. It doesn't take very long to dry. And again, just a little bit more glue and just stick that straight onto my cracker there. And that just finishes it off nicely. So here you have your finished cute mini cracker and you're going to make six of these and they're going to look fantastic as a set because your papers coordinate beautifully together. So I would love to see photos of your finished project and if you would like any more of the papers or if you need help with ordering any uh, of the tools or stamps then do drop me a message because I'd be more than happy to help you uh, sort out an order. So earlier I said I'd tell you how to get hold of my bonus PDF tutorial which shows you how to make two larger style crackers. Um, the chocolate orange box cracker and the full size cracker. So in that PDF tutorial there will also be the templates so that you can print those out and use them again and again. And this free tutorial will be getting sent out to my email subscribers in November. So if you haven't already signed up to my e-newsletter then you can do that now by clicking on the link in the description below the video. I'd love to have you on my mailing list so I can keep you informed about my projects and my classes and any special offers that are coming up. And once you're signed up, then the tutorials will be posted in my next newsletter. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope to see you soon. Bye.